An Empire of Ice and Fire by Longclaw 1 6. Chapter 102 Ragnarok. Before I get started, I'm sorry if I sound a little odd today. I've got a really bad blocked ear that can't be unlocked and it's making my voice a bit louder than normal. Anyway, here we go. The cries of infants echoed through the cavernous hall. It's all right, little one, murmured Miss Sandy, cuddling one of the orphaned infants in her arms. It's all right. Mother of fuck, rocked the sounds of one man, shaking violently from his edgy nerves. We're all gonna die. They're gonna fucking kill us all. Hugging Gilly to his side, Sam turned his head to the man. Sir, will you calm down? This is all a coffin. A motherfucking stone coffin for everyone. Only the monsters will raise every gog and bitch from the dead once he's done massacring us all. A slap rang out, sending him sprawling. Shut the fuck up, hissed Marjorie. Normally beautiful, sweet face twisted in rage. There are children here, you bitch. Have some fucking self-control. Miss Sande mouthed a thank you while Sansa rubbed her sister's shoulder. As furious as the sounds of battle were, shaking the rafters and leaving the sods clustered within the great wall of Winterfell a pure white and shaking from pure nerves, the silence was worse. All encompassing, pervasive into their very bones, ratcheting the apprehension and terror tenfold. At least every battle cry, boom of a cannon, or crackle of hand cannon volley, hammered home the Imperial army was fighting back against the dead. Sam stared into the distance, lost now that he had nothing but the silence to greet him. I should have left you in King's Landing. Was it you to Horn Hill with Mother and Tala and little Sam? I wanted to come, and you know it, Samuel Tarly. Gilly responded firmly. Stop second-guessing yourself. Without you, the wounded would likely all have died. She managed to ease her husband's guilty conscience, though likely not by much. Standing in a slight daze, Sansa stepped around the huddled men, women and children around the crackling fires, towards the thin slit in the windows. Treated as if to have a black pox during the fight, and even more so now, but she braved it anyway, needing to see what was out there. Pressing her eyes against the glass, wiping away the fog of moisture that hung on the windows like a fine gossamer machine, Sansa saw something out of her nightmares. Corpses were strewn everywhere, fires spewing greasy black smoke and ice stabbing into every nook and cranny. A swirling maelstrom of snow shrouding what had been fought over a only past hour in the darkness. Seemingly nothing beyond the walls of her home. But Sansa knew firsthand what was out there. Waiting. Biding its time. Could it be Daenerys that has brought this storm? Sansa trembled at the thought, forcing herself to stay upright. If this were the Seven Hells, it was the deepest of them all. A rapping on one door to the hall sent everyone into a near panic. Sam erased for his dragon class dagger as a few guards around the walls drew their swords. Open up, came the calm command, one Sansa recognised as Podrick, a knot in her stomach that she didn't know she had, releasing upon the voice of her husband. Thank the gods, we need to speak with the hand. Do as he says, Sansa directed, heart pounding in her chest as the household guards obeyed unlatching the logs and removing the two thick logs of wood barring the door. In rushed a gathering of half a dozen, Rob in the van, dried blood covering his gamison. The Lady of Winterfell rushed towards him, practically leaping on her husband. I was so worried! Marjorie sobbed, burying her face in the crook of his neck, tears only intensifying as he hugged her back, kissing the crown of her head. You're wounded! Tis but a flesh wound, he offered, wincing slightly, but otherwise all right. Sansa's eyes flickered to her brother's wounds before a pair of strong arms pulled her into a familiar, comforting embrace. My lady. Warm lips pressed against hers, melting any worries for the moment. She sighed happily into the kiss, tongue searching as before he pulled away. You're alive. Sansa murmured in slight disbelief that her life could get so lucky after everything. I promised I would, dearest Sansa. The two smiled at each other. All right, huddle round. Jamie spread out a map of Winterfell and Wintertown upon a table. Crowded in a ragged circle around it were Rob, Pod, 
a worse for wear aria, Tormond, Grey Worm, Lyle Craighall, Sansa, Marjorie, Edmir, Davos, Melisandre, and Missandei. We spread out the men to defend Windertown and the castle, along with everything in between. All in all, just enough to man the entirety of the battlements. How many losses? Rob asked gruffly. One third, came the equally gruff response, filling the room with ice. One third. Forty thousand men, women and children. Some undoubtedly wounded, but most likely strewn upon the field. All roaming in the darkness with eyes of a malevolent icy blue. Our arrows are depleting, so they can probably last one last final wave from the dead until they have to fight hand to hand. Sansa cleared her throat. Looking among the fighters, where are John and... Ha! Huh. It was Arya who answered. In the air, painting the sky red and blue. John atop Rhaegal with Beleron close behind. I don't know where she is. Last I saw, Bran had gone after her and... Uncle Benjamin fell. The Stark shed tears for their uncle. She could be anywhere. Regardless, we have to move forward on the assumption that they are fighting somewhere far off. Rob had to be the strong leader in Job's absence. Anything new the Night King could throw at us? Spitting, nursing bruises all over, Tormund leaned forward. He's been committing his beasts, but I haven't seen many giants or mammoth. Those will come, direct for the goats. On solo to the goats, Rob looked at Grey Worm. If they get into the courtyard... Then hold them back with everything you have. We were lord to the last man, Lord Stark, answered the unsullied commander, squeezing the Sunday's hand. A throat cleared from the line of Lannister. Opposition my men near the southern gate. Jamie pointed to the connecting defences. If the Night King is smart, he'll concentrate everything here. These are our weakest points. Plus, overwhelming them will cut us off from Wintertown. Then he could hit us from the south as well as the north. So the gate will need my lanchettes. There was no disagreement. He will go for the godswood, Melisandre announced flatly. The force opposing him draws on the weirwood for power, for the spiritual connection to the divine. Ripping it root and stem a weakened his second greatest adversary. Dispatch the iron board to reinforce the godswood walls, Rob directed. I need those reavers to guard my hand cannoneers, Edmir shot back. Rob scowled. You have men, so follow my orders. He turned to Craighall. Can't the cavalry form one last charge? Lord Lyle looked grim. Most of the horses and mammoth. Perhaps we can marshal 1,500 and a dozen beasts. Suicide charge, mostly Dothraki. Through the walls, the horns blared resounding through the air with their mournful serenade of darkness and death to come. More fitting than any other form of herald. Bar the doors behind us. Let no man in, no matter how loudly they scream. Do you hear me? Several kisses left for their wives and lovers. The men filed out. I'll be back. Rob whispered to Marjorie, caressing her belly. The two sharing a smile, hoping that a child nestled within. Podrick kissed Sansa with all the passion he could, leaving her weak in the knees with love as he dashed out. Silent prayers on her lips for his safe return, until feeling an insistent hand nudge her side. Here, Arya said, you'll need this. She had at Sansa a dragon glass dagger. Sansa blinked at the gift, calling out to the retreating assassin. I don't know how to use this. Her sister looked back, smirking. Stick him with the pointy end. Line break. The horns bellowed into the night, over and over to no end. No need to seize them, as there was nothing to truly hide. Resounding through the air as the defenders of Winterfell and Wintertown rallied, leaving their makeshift bunks and chairs, wolfing down the last of their rations to scramble up the battlements and take their positions. Tens of thousands strung along several acres of land, ready to stand firm against the hundreds of thousands ready to overwhelm them. You sure you're ready, Halfman? Tormund grumbled, spitting upon the stone below him. He twirled his axes, shoulders back and muscles tense. 
Gonna get fucked up. My entire life has been shrouded in fucked up, ginger bitch. Tyrion shocked back. Both men silent before simultaneously chuckling. I've been in battle before. Oh, the free folk chief denied the imp. Push yourself and faint within the first minute of actual combat. Tyrion shook his head. Nope, lasted about 15 minutes before I pissed myself and fainted. Got this scar too. He pointed to his forehead. Tormund got forward. Nice! Boom! One of the great towers, a spire anchoring the southwest corner of the castle, went up in a gout of blue flame. Scorpion crew and long-range archers incinerated in the cold fire that immolated the top of the tower. Inky black dragon racing past, roaring over Winterfell. Tongues of dragon fire following it as a black and grey dragon gave chase. Tor dropping, Tyrion kept his eyes peeled on the grey dragon. Is that Edoran? That's the princess's dragon. Suddenly, Tormund erupted into laughter. Fuck's sake! <laughs> King Crow and Lady Crow's youngins are the fucking same as them. <laughs> he nearly fell over, jape overwhelming. Here they come! All at once, the starry sea of blue poked through the fog and snow, illuminating the tens of thousands of corpses charging upon the walls. Crashing through the gaps in the shrouded outer defences, only the great walls of Winterfell remaining to block the assault. Already, the remaining scorpions and ballistae fired at the beasts among them. Cannon booming, sweeping away vast clumps of whites, away into pieces of bones and meat. Still, they came. Rickon Stark drew an arrow out of his quiver, others rattling inside of the near-empty pouch. Knock! Further thousands of bowstrings drew all along the northern walls and below them, crossbows pulled back and matches lighting atop the hand cannons. Loose! They fired over open sights, direct fire at the dead. Shooting forth and slamming into white after white, dragon glass ripping through their decaying flesh and felling them among the countless bodies and bits of bodies that carpeted the ground. Mass rippling as it halted, even drawing back a bit. A great shriek erupted, the whites doubling back and continuing their charge. Fuck! Tormund breathed. Fire at will! Rickon shouted drawing another arrow and firing it. Archers and hand cannoneers letting their last brilliant fusillade upon the unrushing dead, swarm crashing into the walls with a frightening tremble of the stone around their feet. Hands clawing and weapons scraping at the barrier as they try to climb up and failing. Breath crystallising before him, snow and ice blinding his eyes, Podrick guided the 500 hoplites he had with him to the edge of the battlements. Present spears! Shields planted to the ground, the northern hoplites hooting and dropping their saracuses. Dragonglass tips darting forth to stab into the whites, felling dozens, only increasing the fury among them as they tried to swarm against the walls. Free folk dropped rocks onto their heads and the archers continued to fire, adding to the chaos. Clustered around the gatehouse, Tyrion shouted at the hand cannoneers, frantically guiding their fire towards a new threat. Two dozen whites hefting a log scrounged up from among the barriers. When a bullet smacked into one with a wet slap, another took its place, heaving the beam against the gate. Boom! 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 Thundering a demonic rhythm among the vital barrier. A hoplite screamed as the whites pulled upon his sarasa, yanking him down into the swarm below. Hacked to pieces in an instant. More arrows! Rickon yelled his last running through the eyes of a former Western man. We're fucking out, came the reply. Oh, shit, snarled Tormund, pressure building from the mass of whites. In certain places along the line, they had managed to pile together, forming a sort of mad rampart of writhing, squirming bodies for their comrades to climb, bringing the fight to the battlements themselves. The free folk swept in with their axes and bone knives, Tormund himself beheading a white and pushing his corpse down the pile. Cursing, Rickon and the other archers drew their swords and added themselves to the defenders. Walls descending into a frenzied melee of blood and screeching. Drop the pitch! Tyrion screamed, sword stabbing upward, catching a white scrambling over the lip of the battlements through the chin. Spears and axes of the free folk swinging like mad around them, 
desperate to stem the tide rushing over the stone and wood. Corpses covering the floor below them like a rotting blanket. Many men stabbing through the middle and plunging their tormentors down to the waiting spears of the unsullied below. This was like Blackwater Bay. Only worse. Far, far worse. Where's the damn bitch? Rickon moves sloppy but certainly enough against the dead. Caved in a skull with his blade before waving forth the remaining archers not engaged in the melee. Drop! Drop! Steaming barrels of black sludge were tipped over, flowing unimpeded through holes in the battlements, drenching the attack of wing whites in noxious fumes, burning skin and melting away rotting flesh until only bones remained. The shrieking monsters nevertheless fighting on, unbetubbed by the liquid that would have boiled alive the living. Those manning the battering ram kept it up, rhythmically slamming again and again against the gate. Kicking a white in the chest, sending it toppling over the stone lip, Rickon grabbed a torch from one of his arches and readied it over the pitch-soaked ground, catching the blowing glue of a white. Fuck you, he whispered, dropping it. The torch landed at the feet of the white, igniting the puddle of black sludge pooled on the muddy, churned-up ground. While not wildfire, the mix of tar and oil lit up like a candle, flames spreading as fast as the wind. Snarling whites erupted like firecrackers, screaming and shrieking as the orange flames enveloped them in a blazing inferno. Hundreds fell. Hundreds burned. The piles of writhing attackers as the walls became vast pyres, battering ram falling silent, its wielders collapsing to the ground covered in flames. Fuck yeah! Tormund boomed, crushing a skull with his foot, leading the battlements in a snarling triumph. The last of the arrows loosed in a volley against the mass of blue eyes waiting patiently at the edge of the flames. Suddenly, the stone exploded, wood splintering and showering all atop with shards, men toppling both atop the battlements and to the ground below, screaming and crying in pain. Armour plate protecting him, Tyrion shook off the dust, pushing himself to his feet. Blood trickled down Rickon's head as he continued to fight, while Tormund was cursing, ripping several splinters out of his furs. Dozens of corpses were strewn everywhere along the battlements, something having torn gaping chunks through them all along the northern defences. Hornblower's warbled cries, Lord Baylor Hightower scrambling with two hundred reachmen to reinforce the beleaguered defenders. Thick chainmail and long swords proved a much-needed punch along the hoplites to stabilise the chaos unfolding. Stabbing a white through the skull, Tyrion caught a glimpse of a northern front line, ice building in his gut. A dozen white walkers spread out across over a hundred yards, spears and swords in hand as they advanced, giants and mammoth thundering behind their masters, thousands of the fallen rising among them. Line break cold. Such was what the Emperor John Targaryen felt seeping through his body, through his very flesh and bones, a feeling he had grown used to at the war. In the true north, its vast blizzards and ice storms, one that would kill all but the hardiest of souls. Consumed in the snowfall deposited by the winter's gale, John felt colder than he ever had before. And yet he didn't truly feel a thing. A great cataclysm that would have ended him only two years before was oddly comforting. Calling to the wolf's blood within him as the heat of the flames called to his dragon blood. Clearing his mind of the spinning vacuum that had consumed it. Rhaegal! Fuck! The damned Night King. His eyes flashing an ice blue as he raised his weapon forcing John to give a command that ended in both of them tumbling off Rhaegal's back and into the ground. And now, the demon was out there in the snow, only John able to kill him. First, he would have to rise. John braced his hands on the ground to push himself up. One move and he collapsed back down. Gods! His entire body ached from when it had hit the ground seizing it up in an unbearable agony, stabbing through his very core. A voice in his head told him he'd be lucky if there wasn't anything broken. Worth it to save Rhaegal. John could hear the anguished hoots of his mount, desperately searching for him. 
The sound of footsteps crunching along the snow piqued his senses. Alarm bells ringing through his head. But the pain and aches dulled his reflexes. A very much living hand was stuck out in front of his face. Skin seeming to glow an ethereal orange. John, take my hand. Bron? Forcing his movements through the pain, John grasped his younger brother's offered hand. Almost blacking out as he rose, leaning heavily on the tall and powerful warlock that Brandon Stark had become. How in the southern hall did you get here? Brown shrugged, round about way through the wolfswood to here. Actually saw you and Danny mount your dragons. He smiled widely, something John had rarely seen since his accident. I see she's completely recovered, and that I forever killed the Night Queen. Eyes widening, John stood straighter. That was you? He pulled Bran into a hug. Thank you, brother. Catching something over Bran's shoulder, he released the three-eyed rook raven and bent down. Nestled atop the snow was a long claw, only about five feet from where he had fallen. Well, I'll be damned. The gods shine their light on you, John. His Majesty the Emperor certainly had all the luck on the earth. Picking up the sword, letting it alight comfortably, John's eyes were then drawn to a ridgeline at least a hundred yards in the distance. Narrowing dangerously, the rage built in him like a burst of dragon fire. There he is. Anger surged through Bran as well, in him the cold variety. Not alone, though. Surrounding the Night King were three white walkers, spindly beards as white as silver, and eyes malevolent upon them. Though Marden's shone far brighter. And below the ridge, spread out in a dark, grotesque mass, were what had to be five hundred whites and two dozen beasts, all armed to the teeth. Not going to be easy. His arms brightened as the mystic sword materialised in his hands. John spun Longclaw in his wrists, clenching the pommel as the Night King raised his arms. Turning and rising a distant group of corpses, the big fights never are. He closed his hand around the hilt, assuming the fighting stance, smirking, mind connecting with someone high in the heavens above him. Watching the two with a flagrant smirk, the Night King dropped his arms. Task complete. What shall we do with them, great one? Asked his personal guard, each hefting a great sword forged with the clearest of ice, blue tint gleaming from the unholy glow in their eyes. The Night King's smirk widened, gaze meeting each of John and Bran. Kill the false lightbringer. As for the raven. His mind hurt trying to think of a proper fate for him. Hark off his arms, brutally, then bring him to me. Swords pointing directly at the two men, the whites all at once let out a piercing shriek. Weapons flailing wildly, beasts roaring, they charged. Blue eyes set on one thing and one thing only, fulfilling their master's wishes and utterly annihilating the two before them. Looking at Bran one last time, John bellowed a thunderous battle cry of his own. The two wolves charging themselves. Legs pumping through the snow. Sparks shooting off their sizzling blades in the harsh wind. Just the pair against hundreds of ghouls. Their weapons seemingly woefully inaccurate to protect them. But even half a minute against the onslaught. At least until a high whistling suddenly filled the air above them. Dracores! A tongue of flame erupted out of the darkness, Rhaegal's fury enveloping at least fifty whites, their rotting flesh and bone igniting like kindling, torched into ash in a matter of seconds, turning the frozen into torches as they continued their charge. Ahead of Bran, John ducked into the right, wild swing of an axe missing him by a hair. Hearing the sizzle of Bran's blade as it hit bone, John twirled Longclaw and slashed to his left, then right then a downward parry that sent a hand to the ground, severed from its arm. A sharp kick brought the handless white to its knees, John beheading his third kill of the moment. Snarling like a wolf, he charged straight at another, ramming his sword into the fresh white's gut. Orange glow illuminating him like a candle as Bran hacked at the whites. 
Long sword slicing one in half, pulse of energy flinging the rotting torso at a skeleton, shattering it. The raven punched forward, burning a half-bared skull on top contact as it rushed him. Snarls drew his attention to the left, a direwolf leaping. Bran dodged its paws, sword flying through the air with a hiss as it chopped clean through the direwolf's neck and shoulder. A short-faced bear lumbered towards him before Rhaegal blasted across the landscape, picking up the great beast in his jaws and chomping. White no more. Attention elsewhere, Bran spewed a great wall of mystic energy to singe several dozen whites before twirling, sword cutting through the throat of another corpse. An inhuman shriek filled Jon's ears as out of nowhere an ice spider leapt atop him, mandibles writhing to stab at his head. Terror coursing through him, the Emperor felt a surge of dragon fire, punching the monster square in the abdomen, long claw plunging into its carapace before the spider could recover. In the distance, a sally of spiders and whites were practically flinging themselves at him. Keep them off me! Rhaegal roared, thundering in for another attack run. Stream of dragonfire burning all before him to a charred crisp. Feeling the satisfaction of inside him as his father beamed in approval. Turning on a gold dragon to scream for another fourth time. He swung at another white, rusted sword breaking apart on contact with a flaming Valyrian steel. The corpse hesitated, then lunged at John. John was quicker, spinning around and shattering the white's ribcage. He stabbed through the back of one, charging at Bran, free hand then grabbing the plunging arm of another swordsman, thrusting Longclaw into the white's stomach, flames cooking it from the inside. Rhaegal! John swept a pathway with his sword, flames marking scores of squirming, swarming ghouls. Dragars! The green dragon let loose a fiery inferno yet again emulating hundreds in his path. Searing John with a heat of dragon fire, like a live wire through his veins, banishing away any fatigue. With a hoot of triumph echoing from Rhaegal, John heaved long claw downward, cleaving a white and half through the clavicle. Out of nowhere, an ice spear shot past Rhaegal's wing, missing him by barely a foot. John cried out in terror, taking it out on the shadow cat that leapt upon him. Rhaegal, break off and hold! He screamed into the air. I, father! He roared back, disappearing back into the clouds. Relieved for but a moment, John's split second of complacency was shattered as an unearthly bellow towered above him. Punching through the decaying stomach of a corpse, Bran's gaze upon John brought a pulsing fear to his gut. John! Instinctively glowing a dark orange, Bran's sword swung and twirled while his mind walked into the giant, overwhelming the meagre defences its dead brain had thrown up blue eyes turning a milky white as it passed through to the command of the three-eyed raven. It bellowed again, bulky fists and feet charging at the surviving whites, crushing them underfoot. Batting aside five at a time into broken husks of bone and flesh. Grabbing a shrieking beast, silencing it by ripping it apart, charging ahead while the two wolves finished off the stragglers, only stopped after the, all the other whites had died. And a nice spear punched through its heart crashing into the ground with a tiny rumble. Breathing deeply, the cold air scorching their lungs like an invigorating plunge of a knife, John and Bran looked upon the ridgeline, a gentle slope upward, the Night King and his minions waiting for them. Line break. With a powerful screech, Edron slammed his head in against Valthrax's shoulder, loosing a burst of dragon fire that sizzled against the white skin, but not breaking the hold it had on the dragon's torso. Arya screamed, pain transferring to her mind, ripping through her very soul as her bonded dragon shook in agony, monster pressing the attack. What had begun as an attempt to rescue her mother from dueling a drag of fire, one that had threatened to exhaust Beleriand by the greater stamina and capacity of the White, had turned into a nightmare for the princess. Arya thundering frantic commands, feeling Edoran's flames weaken and weaken as jaws clamped ever tighter. Flames lanced from Leonaris, vaporising the howling snow and crashing into Valthrax's head, white releasing its hold on Edoran to snap at the diving blue-grey dragon, chomping its jaws nearly closing around her wings as, as it shot past. Both living dragons fleeing, Leonaris in her rapid dive and Edoran into a steep climb into the clouds, cold fire furious in its wake, undread dragon venting frustration at the loss of its prey. Another tongue of flame enveloped its massive wings, 
Riella's razor sharp teeth ripping a three yard gash into Valthrax's wings. It roared, blue fire enveloping everything around it in a desperate attempt to take down the far smaller dragon. Higher, my darling, higher! Daenerys urged, freezing wind crashing against her face as Balerion gained altitude. Stay with me! She could feel his fatigue, the pain stabbing through multiple wounds dotting his body, filling her soul with the strength to continue. Hold here! The Black Dread Reborn banked to a stop, hooting for his brother and sisters as he held in the middle of the maelstrom around him. Daenerys's gaze quickly finding Valthrax's flailing head crashing into Rhaella's side, knocking the Amethyst Dragon off course, sending her tumbling through the air before righting herself. Balerion shrieking in fear for his sister, horrified eyes tracing upward. Danny picked up the orange blur of Sansenia, diving steep at Valthrax, Rhaegar atop her, and Valthrax's blue eyes angled up, spotting her son. The demand came unbidden. Dive! Dive! With a roar that split the very storm, Balerion beat his wings and dove. Rhaegar wanted to whoop, to scream a thunderous battle cry into the air as he and Sansenya plunged. The winds shrieked around him, hair billowing and a thrill in his very core. It seemed to be just how he and Arya had dreamed of flying atop their dragons like the Targaryen conquerors of old did. As their parents did. But with Valthrax growing closer and closer, guiding Sansenya along the projected path, the immense beast's wings were propelling it along. All romantic notions of dragon riding were sundered from his mind. This was hell. War was hell. Fear and grit swirling, that death could take him at any moment, riveted him. He swore that one day after this would find him and Arya soaring above the clouds together, having the time of their lives. But first, they would have to survive. Ready, girl! Sansenia pressed her wings close to her body, the howl of winds only intensifying as their speed picked up. Rhaegar's eyes almost rolling back in his head. He clenched the spines harder, hands burning as he held on for dear life. Foe closer and closer, clouds disappearing as Sansenia's fast dive approached to the point of no return. Almost there! Aim for the wings! Suddenly, the great corpse tossed its head back, blue eyes staring straight for Rhaegar and Sansenia, more igniting with a great blue inferno. Alarm and panic blared through both Rhaegar and Sansenia as he screamed the new command, Dragoras! Too terrified to even scream, Sansenya su- still managed to loose a small tongue of flame at the great dragon, just as she extended her wings. Orange-red slamming into the growing conflagration just about to fire. The swirling flames exploded in a monstrous explosion of power. Shockwave rippling through the air as Valthrax roared and Rhaegar jolted, almost letting go of the spine. Sansenya screeched in pain as the gusts of air tried their best to tear through her wings. Leathery hide stretching to the breaking point, arresting her fall before bared talon slammed into Valthrax. Though easily three times the size of the juvenile dragon, Sansenia's immense speed slammed into Valthrax like an anvil atop a wooden deck, knocking him dozens of yards through the air, its neck jerked back grotesquely, nearly snapping at as the orange dragon sunk her talons through and burned the decaying scales, roaring a cry that almost resembled pain. Rhaegar did not allow his quarry any quarter to recover. The wing! Get the wing! Screeching with fury and vengeance, the dragon slammed its head into Valthrax's wing, teeth snapping the bone in two and producing a primal howl that boomed over the winds of winter. She darted back before the long, thick tail swung at her head, evading and dodging as best she could without releasing her hold. He was just about to press the attack when his mother's screaming voice filled Rhaegar's mind. My son, go! Aro's voice suddenly joined them from somewhere in the clouds. Brother, leave! We've got this! There was no time to cross his fearsome mother or headstrong sister. Sansanya, dive! The dragon roared, releasing her hold on Valthrax's crippled wing and disappearing into the night after her sisters. Watching her son and his dragon drop into the vastness below, Daenerys bared her teeth in an angry snarl, spurring Balerion on with a furious rage as they crashed into Valthrax, sending it into a death spiral, the tear in its wing only growing as the husk of a dragon tried to flap, to keep steady, 
teeth sinking into the flesh of the white, Balerion ignored the bitter, noxious taste, ripping and tearing at the larger beast. Talons finding perches on the slippery scales and digging in. Yelping and shrieking into the storm, Valthrax flailed its head every which way, struggling to fight the intense scales to face Daenerys, releasing a gout of flame only for it to explode in its mouth, blowing out a hole battered in the side of its jaw thanks to Sansenya, suddenly trying to flip around, sacrificing its destroyed wing in order to mindlessly grapple at Balerion with its charred talons. They grazed the black dragon's side, gouging several deep gashes, Balerion roaring in pain, dragonfire erupting at Valthrax as the monster readied another assault. Out of the clouds plunged Edoron, roaring himself and crashing into Valthrax's left wing, Arya commanding him to bring the monster down. Vengeance in their hearts for wounds sustained earlier. Jaw clamping down on the wing, Sansenya snapped. A jerk of the powerful teeth and jaw ripping through bone and skin to tear the wing off. Hooting triumphantly as Edoron tossed it into the darkness, joining his brother to plunge further to the shrieking white closer and closer to the ground. Several owls! screamed an ironborn reaver, capturing the general reaction of the hundreds of assorted forces guarding the godswood. Awestruck gazes at the thunderous battle above them, turning into screams and shouts that filled the air with chaos. Everybody back! Jora yelled, shoving gawking men out of the tree line. Trickles turned into floods of soldiers, racing for the ramparts and gates in spite of the tens of thousands of whites assaulting the walls. Escape the path of the oncoming dragons. Neck flailing wildly, jaws of smoking with wild blue fire desperately snapping at his tormentors, Valthrax's remaining wing unable to arrest his fall. Membranes ripping with every beat, Balerion and Edoron relentless. Talons digging further as they plunged faster and faster towards the blooming godswood. Frantic assaults from the undead beast wildly missing their mark. Roars from the great dragons of House Targaryen answered by the shrieks and mini explosions of cold fire puffing from the large hole in its jaw. Daenerys couldn't hear any of it. Not the roars of her son. Nor the sounds of her daughter and son beside her. Not the booming of the battle below. Not the cries of Althrax. Not the intense fires Rhaegar was unleashing through his daughters. No. The Empress was lost in her own feral screaming. Mahalo Jagan! Mahalo Jagan! Mouth bared, scorching her own throat as she urged Balerion faster and faster, watching the ground below larger and larger beneath the undead monster until everything jerked violently. A vast cloud of snow and pulverised wood billowed in the sky, dark with soot and ash illuminated by countless fires roaring outside the walls. Ears ringing, Daenerys slowly became aware of her surroundings. The growl of her dragon. The whoosh of arrows over the walls as brave archers stayed at their posts. The cry of her daughter yelling at her, Muna! Muna! Jerry can't be! Shocked out of her complacency by Arya, Daenerys found Valthrax's head lighting up, broken body staring at the wolf's wood itself the source of all spiritual and godly power held at Winterfell, ready to be destroyed by the minion of the Night King. Dahar, Balerion, Perigon! Edoron, Perigon! Blue fire shot far off its mark, as two sets of jaws slammed into the dead flesh and hide. Valthrax screaming, shattering the remaining serenity of the godswood. Balerion and Edoron bit and tore into the great dragon's scales like rabid, starved beasts, Chunk after chunk of meat and bone ripped from the white's chest. A desperate assault to shake off the, its smaller tormentors was beaten back by Edoron's rearing head, darting forth like a scorpion bolt into Valthrax's neck, stunning the white. Cold fires stained the sky a blue-white in what had to be the death throes of the King of Monsters. Its unbeating heart and rotting innards opened up to the outside world. Both Targaryens knew what to do. Dracarys! Dracarys! Perched back. Together, the dragon brothers unleashed a torrent of dragon fire. Everything they could roaring at point blank range, covering the godswood in a red orange hue as the two tongues of flame combined to immolate all in its path. 
scales peeling, flesh charring, bones cracking and crumbling into fine ash. Shrieks from the white only intensifying, slave mind wailing the siren song of impending death. Piercing across the battlefield that halted all but those embroiled in di direct fights. Yadar, Kiligon! snarled Daenerys, her vision blazing in an even hotter inferno. Kiligon, Sirius! Arya shouted to her mount, fear and determination swirling in her expressions. Both dragons doubling their attack, dragon fire billowing around in a great cloud of flame and smoke. Only the swirling snows preventing the entire godswood from catching a blaze in a great tinderbox. One last cry left Valthrax's throat before flames seemed to detonate within. Skin bursting open as tongues of fire shot out all over its body. The entire right shoulder disappearing into the inferno. Flesh of its neck only hanging on by strips of scale and flesh. Neck flopping jaw bared in a majestic, terrifying snarl, the malevolent blue glow of a Night King's slave, finally extinguished. The great dragon of Sorin Targaryen, at the hands of his rider's legacy, finally at peace. Heads rearing back, Balerion and Edron roared loudly into the night, triumphantly heralding their victory, warning all, from the lowest corpse to the highest god, that any challenge would bring fire and blood to the heavens themselves, allowing a moment of pride in their trophy. Arya looked over at her mother, the two Valyrian royals grinning like mad, silver hair blowing in the wind, Visenya and Alysanne reborn. Booming cannon and whooshing arrows brought Daenerys back to reality, quickly cocking her head at her daughter. Take to the air! Find your brother, sweetling! I'll stay here. Opening her mouth to challenge, Arya took in the glare from her mother, one that squashed any defiance. Stay safe, mother. Please stay safe. Edoron was worried as well. Keep her alive or I'll fucking kill you. He hissed at his brother, who only bobbed his head and neck in response. Letting out a shriek, dragon and rider ascended into the air, loosing a tongue of flame at the swarming hordes outside the walls as they raced into the distance. Climbing off of Beleriand's back, the fatigue and shock of the last several hours, drawn out of her since the fire had overcome the ice thanks to Bran's magic, began to envelop Daenerys. She nearly collapsed, legs weak. Only Beleriand's quick movements letting her grab onto his snout, managing to steady her. Thank you, my darling, she cooed, rubbing his scales. The dragon purred in response, Daenerys! She staggered again as Arya practically leapt into her arms, weeping sobs of joy at seeing her sister again. Joining only a split second later was Mira and Rickon, the four of them locked in a tight embrace. Is it really you? Arya asked, lips quivering with emotion. Laughing through her own tears, Daenerys nodded, I am back! As the Starks disentangled from her, Danny was knocked to the ground by a very large ball of fur. Ghost, she began, but the direwolf simply devoured her with delighted licks, greeting her as he was greeted John upon both resurrections. Gendry, watching this from several paces away, shouted to several bannermen, The Empress lives! She fights for the living! A hue and cry that simply spread like wildfire overcoming the entirety of the battlements like a cheer, an exalted battle cry that filled the Imperial army with a surging vigour to fight. Finally, managing to overcome the direwolf's enthusiasm, Daenerys found herself face to face with Sir Jorah, her old faithful bear. Khaleesi! His face brimmed with an unshed grief. Daenerys hugged him wordlessly knowing what her malevolent captor had done to him. She is gone, gone for good. Breaking apart, the shrieks of the dead only intensified against the walls of the godswood. Whipped up in a frenzy to charge inside. Men! screamed the empress, drawing Saracen from her hip. Prepare to defend yourselves! Balerion let out an earth-shattering roar behind her. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that one because holy moly, 
Oh, yay, I'm loving this. That bit with Tormund and Tyrion was really funny. And Ghost and Arya and Rick on a mirror at the end. Oh, that was cute. And, of course, Dragon Battle. I mean, them ripping off Valthrax's wing. Dang, I forgot that bit. Wow. And not to mention, okay, can we just say this? Bran and Jon, and mind, and mind this, Bran doesn't have proper training, taking down 500 whites with Rhaegal's help. Holy moly. Oh boy, yeah. I don't know if the twins are grounded yet. I think they might be. Yeah. Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified for an ever played a new video. Have a good day, night or whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guys, guys and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Bye.